morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, guys. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Hello. Anyone hearing me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we're here. Yes, sir, we're here. Anyone hearing me? Yes, sir. Okay. So this morning we're going to look at the concept of capacitors, right? So consider we have two conducting material, M1 and M2. These are placed in a dielectric. Right. As you know, the dielectric is referenced at all times to free space. So this dielectric medium can be free space or it can be some other thing, oil, paraffin, whatever. So if it's placed in free space, the permittivity of free space is E naught. Hmm. If it's placed in another dielectric, it will be a function of E naught. So your dielectric constant will be ER, which is your relative permittivity, 
times e naught. Er is like two, three, whatever. But in any event, we are looking at capacitor. So this two conducting material is in a dielectric with permittivity E. Again, E is ER times E naught. So the material E1, M1, carries a positive charge, Q. Right? While material M2 carries a negative charge equal in magnitude as Q. Right? There are no other charges present. So the total charge of the system is zero. Positive plus negative equal. So the total charge present is zero. So as we know, the charge cannot reside within the conductor. It must be on the surface. Right? Thus for M1 and M2, charge plus Q and minus Q reside on the surfaces of M1 and M2 respectively, as shown here. So now, such a system which has two conducting surfaces carrying equal and opposite charges separated by a dielectric is called capacitive system giving rise to a capacitance. Make sense so far? So far, sir. Yeah, one, sir. Yes, sir. The electric field is normal to the conductor surface, and the electric flux is directed from M1 towards M2 in such a system. So the electric field is normal to the surface, right angles. And the electric flux goes from the positive charge to the negative charge. So electric field, A field line, for argument's sake, is going to originate from here, from the positive charge, and it's going to terminate on an equal and opposite negative charge on M2. There exists a potential difference between the two surfaces, M1 and M2. So we're gonna let this potential difference be V12 from one to two.
the ratio of the magnitudes of the total charge on any one of the two conductors and the potential difference between the conductors is called the capacitance of the two conductor system denoted as C. So this ratio, C equal Q over V. C equal QV. Q is charge in coulombs and V is potential difference in volts. Right? Coulomb over volt is known as Farad. As the charge Q reside only on the surface of the conductor, it can be obtained from the Gauss law, where Q is the integral of what Q close part of D dot DS. D is epsilon E. Where epsilon E is E naught times E R. Tell me if we're still holding it together. Yes, sir. While V is the work done in moving unit positive charge from negative to positive surface and can be identified as V equally in integral along the path or minus the integral of E dot DL. So your capacitance, which is Q over V, you get this Q from Gauss now, and you get this. Sir, is that a positive? Huh? I to positive that sir. Top equation, we have V equal integral I to. This? This yes, is right equation, the far is the right. Sir. Yes. Is that a plus at the top? A integral? Yeah. Uh. No, it, it, it's, it's the integral along the, uh, the path. So, all this is saying is the integral from the negative charge to the positive charge. The path, length, this is L. Yes, sir. So what's that above the top one? Above the next one, the top part, sir. Look like a plus or H or something. We're here? Yes, sir, that. Right. It is just saying that it's the integral from the positive or from the negative to the positive. Oh, we get it. Yes, I know, sir. The path. Right. So then, if the charge Q is increased, right, then E and D get increased by the same factor. Because the only way you can increase this, if you increase E, and this e, epsilon is a constant, so you increase D by the same factor. So 
So V the same story. So the capacitance is not the function of charge, field intensity, flux density, and potential difference. It's not. Because if you increase one, you increase everything by the same ratio. Ah, you digest that? So I'm going to get the engage on the running back over top, sir. 10 seconds. Mm, take your time, man. Respect, sir. So, capacitors in power. Yeah, yeah, three capacitors in parallel. So the same voltage is across all of them. Voltage is V. So Q1 plus C1 V, Q2, Q3. So for capacitors in parallel, it is similar to resistors in series. And this is why. When capacitors are in parallel, same voltage exists across them but the charge are different. So the equivalent capacitor, capacitance for, us, for a number of resistors in parallel is C1 plus C2 plus C3 times V. Or is it like you use KVR to, to find them? So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I was asking if it's like you use KVR to, to find the equation. To find which equation? Like in when determining the q1 q2 q3 equals q mm -hmm. all right you don't need to derive it as long as you can apply it so. I'm, I'm not based on the question i'm not sure Oh. That that you you understand what I'm saying. Again, okay. right. 
Did you follow above here? Yeah. Think yeah. so, sir. You, you try to determine the Gaussian, the, the electric flux density times the surface. We come to the point where we agree because up to this point, as far as I know in your study, you get that Q equals CV, which is this, huh? Eh? But but we um we go through the process to show you how come Q equals CV. Which I hope you you got that part. Now here we have three capacitor in parallel. We are saying that the voltage here is the same voltage across each of the capacitor. Right? Oh, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, sir, because of the impedance of the capacitor, I could say that. Sir. In terms of the parallel connection, as in because because sir, the the capacitors kind of in some cases act like a, a short circuit, in some cases because of how high resistance should be or something, or oh. something like that. It's not none of them are in a. Short circuit state. All right. In your mind, throw away, the, throw away Q2 and Q1. So you just have um, this one capacitor. So your charge Q would be C1 times V, right? Now, when you put another capacitor, right? Your charge in this capacitor would be C2 times V. There is nothing, there is no voltage drop across any of them that's going to take away from the other one. For all I care, these could be separated. You have V across this, you have V across this, and you have V across this. So the total capacitor Capacitors in the system would be the, 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 or the total charge in the system would be the sum of the total charge in each of the capacitors, which is what this is saying. I need to say. Hmm? Saying. Uh, I agree, no, I can see it better. Okay. So, an, a, an equivalent capacitor which store the same charge Q at the same voltage V will be, will have Q plus equivalent times V. Okay. Which I think is what we just said. So if you have a hundred capacitor in parallel, your equivalent capacitor 
Je da stavnemo. All right. So let us look at a, uh, we're gonna look at different type of capacitor. But first, the simplest, a parallel plate capacitor. That means you have a conducting plate here Use the imagination and think of this in three dimensions. And you have a conducting plate here. Just like in the generic system above, where we have two conductors in a dielectric. The, in this case, is a plate. So you have a sheet, sheet of charge. So we have above where we have a positive charge on M1 and a negative charge on M2. Here on this plate, we have a positive charge and on this plate, we have a negative charge equal. So we don't, we call it rho S now, which is charge per area, All right? So this is your plate one, and this is your plate two. And we have, just like above, the field lines emanating from a positive charge, and terminating on a negative charge. The only new concept what we have here now is that they are separated by a distance D. Okay. We are going to place this system in the Cartesian coordinate system. So, it, they are in the XY plane. And plate one, we put it at zero in the Z. And plate two is at some point from zero, known as the. Tell me if you're up to date with that explanation. So play two nine, nine, nine white plane, sir. Huh? Play two would have been nine, the white plane. The both both um plates are in the XY plane. Okay. Okay, sir. Everybody working with me so far. So oh, let us. So far, sir. The parallel plate capacitor is shown in that. It, it, it consists of two parallel metallic plates separated by distance D. The space between the plates is filled with a dielectric of permittivity, E. The lower plate, plate one, carries the positive charge and it's distributed over it with, with a charge density plus rho s. The upper plate, plate two, carries a negative charge and is distributed over the surface with a charge density minus rho s. Plate one is placed at z equals zero, that is, XY plane. 
Hence, normal to it is the Z direction. Upper plate two is in the Z equal D plane parallel to XY plane. We have said all of that. The era of cross section of the plate is in meter square. Therefore, Q charge equal rho S times the year. Remember, rho S is per meter square. So if you multiply it by the area, you get the total charge. This is magnitude of charge on any one plate as density carried by both is equal in magnitude. So then, to find the potential difference, let us obtain E between the two plates. <laughs> So, plate one, infinite sheet of charge. We have done before that the electric field of an infinite sheet of charge is given by this. So, plate two, also an infinite sheet of charge, which is given by this. Yes, yes ma'am. Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. All right. So then, <coughs> the electric field between the two charge is E1 plus E2. You have for E1, you have for E2. Add so them, you get this. <coughs> now, your potential difference doesn't change. Negative the integral of E that there. This. Let me know if you have any problem with that math. Uh, 
the two are integral between zero to d, the distance between from the two. D right? zero. Well, from from plate from plate one from plate two down to plate one. That's the idea. Yeah. So what is rho over epsilon? Mm. Wait, so you can scroll up a little bit, but like, like keep this part of the equation on this. Oh, wait, no, you can't. Oh, all right, thanks. Uh, I, I was just wondering where the, where the dx, ax plus li had come from. Nashan, give me half hour. I'm in class. I'll call you back. Sir, don't change it, sir. Please, sir. Five seconds. Up down. Hmm? So we have a potential difference, sir. The equation, sir. Please. Yeah? Up down, sir. Go further up. Yes, sir, right, sir. Don't move, please. Um, you, you finish writing. I I can watch your robot to the next part. Yeah, my respect. So could you scroll back down a bit? To, yeah, this is the next part. Let's so see if we can get the last the last capacitance part. As in understand. So that's much. All right, thank you, sir. I mean, can I can I shoot forward? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna restart. Okay. Yeah. Sir, what? Oh, oh yeah. Is there somebody that a question? Yes. I right, just hold that question until I restart. All right. Okay. Yes, Get it there. Oh, All right. Now, yeah, as I was saying, is you know. Very few of you are gonna get the opportunity to go out in a real engineering environment to work on just one aspect of this, just one. Say you're in a coaxial cable division, you're in the you're in the packaging division, you're in the um the transistor development division. And you know, are are you you just in the a division to make the the chip smaller? Because you have millions of transistors on say one of those small little chips that you look at, millions of transistors. So now, your job now, as because they make 
thousands of chips on a single piece of silicon at a time. It's several process, but everything just build up, build up, build up, build up, like you're building a, a housing scheme, right? Everything just coming up. Now, as you put transistors closer together, or the conductors in the chip closer together, you get feel, electric feel between them. Right? Just like yeah. you'd have this. Eh? Just like you'd have this now, a wire here and a wire here in real life, in a house. And if you come close together, they start cross down. On the chip, it happened too. Right? So the, um, you will have a group that all they focus on is to ensure that the cross start between the, con the conductors in the chip is that it don't, don't happen. Current flowing in this conductor, flowing, flowing in that conductor, it doesn't happen. So I just say that to say so many interesting aspects of, of engineering that unfortunately a lot of you're not gonna realize because you're gonna go work with digital R flow, which a technician work, but anyway. So you say, say you have set the link with Intel, sir? Huh? What are you implying, sir, that you'll help us get into Intel, sir? I'm not implying anything. If you perform good enough, these com companies find you anywhere you are over the world, you know. Anywhere. Uh -huh. Sir, mm -hmm. I was speaking to someone and they made you know, the transmission lines comparable to capacitors in the sense that, you know, you have your, your line and your neutral and they said, since both of them are carrying charges and between them, is air which would act as the dielectric he said that would automatically simulate it being a capacitor of course that's why there, there has to be a certain um distance between them yeah yeah and again i guess it goes with what you're saying now where you can okay what's the term you use when you know, see the transistors are too close, they give off a what? The interference. Yeah. Or, or the cross talk? Cross talk. Talk to steel. Uh, because you know, <laughs> you know what? You know what? To me, said this. All right. So, so you have a digital pulse going down the line, and this one and zero. You know, I think or too close and then it jump over the other line and mix up and when you would have would have forget would have be um yeah, man, sir, it makes sense, man. It makes sense. But if it be complete at the other end for here where it has a, a pure bad or they are here. <laughs> 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 you understand? So well, I tell you, I tell you. I'm uh, a uh, 60 year old hello, and believe you me, I would just love because the thing is so exciting. It is even more exciting than when I was in it. Uh, um, my, my son, who, who is also an electrical engineer, and he was working for, he was doing more, 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 more the, the technical work, like what you, you do, like at JPS or something. He was doing that at Dallas Morning News. And somehow he wake up after these years and we call him by over Texas Instrument, I said. My father, so I'm for calling because I'm coming at this now. 
will, it will be starting Monday. I mean, we just tell the wife, say, boy, I will call him later and talk to him and say, listen to me, man. You should have listened to me all these years because when you finish your career, you're going to be saying the exact thing that I'm saying that I wish I had known long to. This thing is so exciting, believe you me. You can hear, you can hear the excitement in my voice. When I'm telling you about it. Yes, sir. You can't hear it, man. Can it's, hear so, it. it's so exciting. But you know, when you when you have all the pressure of passing your exam to get your degree and money low and woman a call and pick me a band and all them something. There, you know, you not really give it your, your your all. But from where I sit now, if I had that opportunity, no. Man, I would have the best life ever. Mm. Anyway, when I shut up, man, me go on. Sir, we're not leaving the regrets, you know, sir. Just to make you know that, you know, sir. So we're not leaving the regrets, sir. See it, sir. Yeah. All right. Okay, so coaxial cable. So consider a coaxial cable. Ah. Uh, a coaxial capacitor is shown here in a radius A or the radius B. Remember, this is a conductor you know, and this is a conductor. It's separated by a dielectric. Mm -hmm. It has L. So your child you now is, is um, <clears throat> Rho L per meter. <coughs> you in a conductor carry the positive charge, the outer conductor the negative charge. Q is rho L times L. E as be, from before is given as this. We already derived this years ago. Again, V is E dot DL. We already derived it. Here's a V between your conductors for a coaxial. So Q, which is rho L times L over V, let's give you this. So your capacitor is this. So there's nothing there that you don't know already. Just look how the math is put together. And is the capacitance of a quark cable, say? Yes. Again, you see the capacitor don't have anything to do with your chart. Uh, sir, mm -hmm. before there was a component called C, sir, and the diagram, sir, how does C come into play? You mean this C here? No, it's a small C. Let's go back up, sir. C there, sir. The, oh, that's epsilon. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. It's epsilon. All right, let us look at the spherical capacitor. You could almost not really have to explain them. Concentric spheres. This your inner sphere, the A. The outer sphere, 
Let us be. The dielectric between them, this is not C, it's epsilon. Electric field between the inner and the outer. As before, we spent a lot of time deriving the electric field of the concentric um, conductor. So we have E, we have V. That's your math. Nothing to it. Again, here C have nothing to do with your charge. Just the dielectric and your separation. Your ear. All right. I'm going to touch this now. I don't wish I really finish that at all. But anyway, we'll spend a, next time we'll spend a, a few minutes just to <clears throat> deal with energy stored and work done with a capacitor. Um, this is what I. I want to do this afternoon. <clears throat> I am going to just send you the tutorial sheet with, with um, six or seven solved problems. What I want you to do well, I have some, I have to go see, see my vet, which is my doctor. What I would like you to do, guys, is the following. Um, and I'll send you, I, I won't necessarily send you before two, but I'll send you this evening. I would like you to read the problems and try and solve the problems before you look at my solutions. Nothing wrong with that, sir. Nothing wrong with that. You, if you do otherwise, you can only hurt yourself. But sir, the thing is, we're going to kind of need to explain the working out the same way, sir. Yeah, man. Um, and I don't have a problem with that. You can call, you can call me anytime. Anybody have a question, call me after I send it to you. Okay? Wait, sir, so you mean we're doing this instead of having class, sir? Huh? You mean we're doing this instead of having class? Yes. Because I have, I have to. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. All right, sir. All right, sir. Yeah. Is there a Google Classroom for this class? A WhatsApp group. Who is that? I'm not in that group. Somebody answer that for me, please. Uh, not in that group. I'm saying it in chat. Mm -mm. Mr. Thompson. There I. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just deal with that for me now, please. All right. Just make sure they're in the WhatsApp group.
So I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, sir, but during the meeting, you yes, more, sir. Do, do any meeting as yet, sir? Huh? Uh, asking you not to end the meeting as yet, sir, so we can get the okay. numbers. Okay. Okay, tell me when to end. All right, sir. Until next time, I look out for that post. Okay, cool.